Hej. Hello. Hello, Matt. Hi. How are you? Good. You? I'm good. Cool. I'm good. I, I've, I'm in back to back to back meetings. <laughs> All right. This has started recording. So I guess we'll get started. Uh, today, is, this is the Artifact Hub meeting for Tuesday, October 27th, 2020. Um, I added two things to the agenda. Did uh, either of you have anything to add to the agenda? Mm, no. Okay. The first one that I had was the blog, um, the idea that I had. So I've noticed in the Artifact uh, Hub room in Slack, you've posted a lot of useful and wonderful information. And I thought, you know what? This would probably serve better on a blog that could be tweeted out and shared out in other avenues, which would pull more people into uh, the Artifact Hub into seeing it and then knowing it and using it. Um, what do you think about that? I think it's a, it's a great idea and we should definitely do it. So maybe we could try to define, I mean, some interesting topics that starting from the beginning, like. Yeah. Maybe the first one could be just introducing Artifact Hub a bit more and explaining yeah. to users how to add their first repo. And, you know, we can define a few topics and write some notes. I think it's great. So, yeah. Uh, my question would be um, what platform of choice would you all like to have for the blog? I have no preference. Um, many of the CNCF projects use Hugo and static site generation but I don't care. We are not bloggers actually, so we don't have any, any preference, so. Okay. Okay. Whatever then it should I, be fine for us. Okay. Then I'll be happy to, to take this action to go start sorting through uh, how we would do this. Um, and I'll try to figure something out. Okay, cool. Awesome. I might ask for some help just to style it like our site or somehow similar. I have, but that's about it. I will probably go with the standard setup that the CNCF tends to use to do this, uh, just to keep it in line with everything else. All right, sounds great. Okay. Uh, it'll 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 be a couple of weeks before something is up and running because I'm scrambling around on Helm stuff right now, but. This is something I will carve out time for. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Yeah. And then the second thing is the uh, Helm Hub redirect that I had. 
So right now we get every request comes to the Helm project and then just gets forwarded on. Um, there is no nice way to do a DNS redirect to just say, hey, use this other thing and redirect here. So we have to have a redirect somewhere and we could have it on the Helm side or we could have it on the artifact hub side, right? Like we could do a C name and then you could catch it and redirect. Um, and so there's, there's a few different ways we could do it. And I didn't know whether we had a preference on this project um, on how we wanted to look at that redirect. If there's an easy way to do it in the CDN here or. Mm, I mean, one way that we use at the beginning of the project to redirect when we chose the, at the temporary name would be to do it on the AWS ALB. So I would just, I would just set up that uh, on the AWS ingress, the ALB ingress we are using at the moment. So if we do that, I would need you to authorize me to set up a certificate for hub.helm.sh to set it up on AWS certificate manager. Um, ah, yes. So if I do that, then I prepare the redirection on the ingress side. And once it's ready and everything is working, you can change the A entry for hub.helm.sh and point it to CloudFront. Okay. Now, with the hub.helm.sh, we get every single request in. Um, for that API that you have being cached for all those funny strings we were talking about being, those all hit hub.helm.sh. How much of an impact would that have over here with the load balancer setup? We are, we are already getting those. So I think you're already getting everything to us. So that okay. wouldn't change anything. Okay. I still have to take this to the Helm project to figure out what we want to do over there. But I just wanted to see here what we thought. We may just keep the redirect as is, um, but I'll, I'll talk to folks over there. All right. I mean, the, if we go the way I have proposed, Matt, you still have full control of the redirect because in the end, you are the yeah. one changing hub.hem.sh to point into CloudFront. So, and you can yeah. revoke the certificate thing at any moment. So, yep. We are already, I think, I don't know if we have still it in place, the the one we set up at the beginning, but it's quite easy and you wouldn't have to maintain okay. the server just for the redirection. Okay. We, we have to have the servers anyway for other things. Um, and so I will talk to folks. And, and in fact, it's actually a pretty minimal cost compared to every other thing we have that costs on Helm. Uh, it's a drop in the bucket, so. Okay. Okay. Those are the only things I had. Uh, I had hoped to take it to the Helm project discussion last week, but we ran out of time and the week before, but we ran out of time. So we'll see uh, if I can get it in this week. Awesome. I mean, I can do the our part of the setup quickly from one day to the yeah. other. So it won't take much time. Okay. Great. All right. Nice. So there is something that maybe, I don't know, it's about the, the official artifact ticket that we still have open. I don't know if maybe we could try to gather some ideas, maybe for the next meeting, on what people should do if they want to claim the official status on Artifact Hub. At the moment, we have a few that have been done manually by me. I'm, I'm happy to keep doing that, which is to probably define what they should do when they want to claim that status. I mean, if it's only, okay, I'm the owner of this repo, you can go and check it out and please give me this batch temporarily. And I promise that in my repo, the only thing that is going to be is the software that I own, or I don't know, we just. Can we do it not at the repo level, but at the chart level? So it's only certain charts in a particular repo? I mean, we could do it at the moment. It's not like it's working, it's per repo. Um, okay. But we could try to change that I would need to review the implications because at the moment I, I went this way for a reason that I can't remember right now. So. And, and the reason I think about this is I'm reminded of, we've had a couple of times where somebody's had a Helm repository 
and they've had their official ones in there and then they forked somebody else's and stuck them in there for some reason but it wasn't an official place and so i knew they didn't keep everything that was their own um in this case they had a forked version one case i remember had a forked version of cert manager um and as soon as cert manager was updated they got rid of their forked version but for a while they had to keep a forked version of it to work with everything else they had going on and I would not be surprised if you had something else like that. Yeah, on the other hand, if we have it per package, and so it, are they supposed to request that for every single package they have on the repo? I mean, at the moment we have the Prometheus one that has like 15 or 16. I recently, I don't know, I can't remember the name now, but another one that I approved recently that has five or six. So it's going to maybe become a, lead, a little bit extra work. I don't know, we can do it, but then we need to define if they need to request that per package. And if they release another package, they need to again, because they add just another thing to their own uh, software. And say, oh, you need to request again the official status for this extra package. How do you how do you do it? Do you manually have to alter the database or is there a user interface? No, at the moment I do it in the database. And given that it's per repo, it's just, I mean, I'm just updating a single yeah. field, so it's, it's quite easy. It would be the same for a package use that we need to do it, but it would create more yeah. work on their side requesting it individually. Yes. Um, Someone recently mentioned, oh, do we need better organization? But that would be even, I mean, one step further because it, they can always create multiple repositories. It's not the end of the, so if yeah. you say, okay, this is my official repo and this is another repo I have for some stuff that is not official. That's a good question. I'm going to think about this. I don't know. And I would be curious to know if you could remember that reason. Um, but doesn't matter if we think that that's the best way of doing it, we can change it. So it's not a problem at all. So even if it's a little bit extra maintenance work, not. And if it's one of those things that has a user interface on it, it's something that I or if we get other maintainers in here could go spend time doing. So it doesn't have to all fall on you. Okay. Yeah, at the moment there isn't any super user UI. So I think maybe it's yeah. a bit early for that because we don't know what kind of maintenance work we'll need to do, but I'm happy to share any credentials so that you guys can step up and do it manually in the database as well, if you want to. <laughs> But it's not a problem for yeah, me, it's something I've... super quick. So it's an update and I do it in a second. It's just, it's nothing. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you can think of that reason, I'm going to think about this and I've got a couple of people I want to go talk to, to just bounce the idea off of. All right. Okay. And Dan is somebody I want to talk to about this because he might have ideas. So I might go chase him down now about this one. Okay, cool. If we can also think about something that would allow us to automate this, but at the moment I don't I don't have any good idea to say okay we don't need to maintain this. So yeah. so tricky. Okay. I'll think about this more. That's a good idea. Okay. Do we have anything else? No, I think that's it. All right. Well, then have a wonderful week and I'll see you online. You too. Thank you, Matt. Okay. See you soon. You Thank Bye. you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.